want to talk about impressions. And I think a good place to start would be first impressions. Because you see, as I walk up here today wearing this incredibly dope outfit, <laughs> each of you, whether you realize it or not, has made a snap judgment about me based on my look alone, before any word comes out of my mouth. <clears throat> first impressions matter. And research shows that it takes one second to make an impression on somebody, and people judge people in just one second. And unfortunately, as I remove this outfit and show a bit more of a uh, reasonable outfit for a presentation like this, I'm not going to have an opportunity to make that first impression again. People judge you based on your look and potentially the first words out of your mouth on a number of personality traits. In just that one second, the time it takes to say hello, people are determining whether or not they think you're trustworthy, confident, competent, warm, amicable, and a number of other traits that are going to impact the manner in which they respond to the rest of your presentation. This is a big deal. If you enter your presentation and people immediately don't think that you're trustworthy, then your presentation is going to fall flat. So what can you do to make sure that you do have a good first impression on your audience and get your presentation kicked off on the right foot? Let's start with some bad news. You can't control everything. If you're tall, you're tall. If you're short, you're short. If you have an interesting sounding voice, let's say high pitched or low pitched or raspy, well, there's not much you can do about that. You also can't really control the biases that your crowd may already have. They're going to have certain biases already. So if you can't control these things, does that mean that you're at a loss for something to do? Well, not really, because what you can do is you can overcompensate. As an example, let's say that you're someone who's much shorter. In that circumstance, you can make the extra effort to make sure that you have good posture, that you stand straight, and that you strike a confident pose. Or if you're somebody who, say, let's say, has a very low, raspy voice that might shock your crowd initially, what you could potentially do if the situation calls for it is call attention to your voice and actually maybe make, make a joke about it and make them feel more comfortable when they hear you for the first time. The trick is understanding where your crowd may have biases and figuring out how you can minimal, minimalize those biases by doing something else. Now, there are a number of things that you can control. These include things like the way you enter the room or the first words that are out of your mouth or what you're wearing or potentially the title of your presentation if you do have a title. These are all things that are critically important that your crowd's going to see from the get-go and you need to really think about these things to figure out what first impression you want to leave with your audience. And there's really one important thing you need to remember to be able to figure out how to craft these things, and that is, who is your audience? How do you want your audience to perceive you? Do you want them to view you as a peer or as a superior or something in between? And the answer to that ultimately is going to determine the way you should dress, uh, the way you should speak, and the first words on your slides. So, if you know your audience, and you know what biases they may have, you structure the things you can control to match that audience, and you try and overcompensate for the things that you can't control, you can make a good first impression. Now, unfortunately, at this point in time, you haven't actually said anything yet. So how do you make sure when your audience leaves that room that you leave them with a lasting impression? What if I told you that I have found the one thing that can bring the world together? The one singular thing that can bring everybody in the world together. The world's a big place, over seven billion people, and I've found the one thing that can bring every continent, every country, every person together, over seven billion people. Would you believe me? It's pretty surprising. In fact, I was surprised myself, because I can confess one thing to you. I found this out when I was nine years old. Now, what do we think the solution is? Do we think it's science, technology, art, music, government, philanthropy? Do you have any idea of what it might be? Any guesses? Love. Love, love is usually a good, a good solution that people often think of. That's not what I'm thinking of, and that's not the solution. One more. Iowa. <laughs> Surprisingly, that's a subcategory of this solution. But let me get right to the point. The solution? Soccer. Now, you might be asking yourself, how is soccer going to bring the world together? How is it the one thing that can be the solution that brings everyone together? And that is a valid question to be asking. So we're not going to talk about that now. We're just going to take a step back from the story, and we're going to talk about what I was trying to do with that story, ideally and, and hopefully with the effect that we are intending to make a lasting impression. And what was I trying to do? Tease before you tell. 
When you tease before you tell, research has shown that there's a few things that can actually help engage the audience and actually engage learning. So there's a study done by UC Davis where they had people go through a process of asking questions and the questions that they were more interested in and more curious about actually led to better learning and then better subsequent learning. Uh, and the reason that was important is because it piqued their interest. They wanted to learn more, it engaged them, and they were excited for what was to come. So how do you do this? A few things that I was trying to employ, ask your audience questions, try to engage them, tease them with answers, or tease them about potential answers, reveal an answer to them, and then ultimately dive into some of the points you want to make. Well, unfortunately, I haven't dove into why, why soccer is the solution. That's one way that you can continue to engage them, and then you can lead to further discussion. All in all, um, these are things that are really important to consider for actually getting to your story. But now the big question becomes, how do you eventually go about telling that story most effectively? Well, you could start by showing something. So we heard a pitch just now. Here's my pitch. Let's say I want to sell you something. I want to convince you guys to change your bicycles from one with a regular metal bike chain to a carbon fiber belt drive system. One way is I could show on these slides a set of specifications like how it's a high strength carbon fiber belt, it will last a lot longer. Or I could highlight some of the benefits that you would never ever have to grease and service your metal bike chain again, saving you time and money on maintenance. But another way is I could simply just bring the bike here for you guys to see for yourself, there's nothing like having the audience have an upfront and close encounter with the product. I could even run a live demo. I could let you guys, one of the audience members, take it out for a test drive and come back and talk about how great that product is. Kind of like the earlier medical application, you could actually bring the app here and let the audience members see for themselves how good it is. <coughs> you might think it's a high-risk maneuver, but if you have confidence, you have to have confidence in your product to sell it. Now, not all of us will have to be in a role where we're selling something or we have to make a pitch to a VC. But upon graduation, I'm sure everyone here will have to convince people using data. So, what if I told you that a bag of movie popcorn, a small one, used to contain 37 grams of saturated fats? That's almost twice the recommended daily limit. Did that really have an impact on you? How about if I told you that that small bag of popcorn, if you eat it, is technically healthier than having greasy bacon and eggs for breakfast, Big Mac and fries for lunch, and topping off steak with all the fats left in for dinner. Well, that's the approach that a non-profit organization did in the 1990s to wage a media campaign <coughs> against movie food vendors who were selling popcorn using cheap coconut oil to cook the popcorn. And because of the media frenzy and the public outcry, those guys had to switch to a healthy alternative. So what did I show you? Instead of just displaying charts, tables, I translated that information into something concrete and tangible such that it will make an impact on the audience. Well, some of you may still not be convinced. Like three, four days after the headlines, people will forget about that information, right? Let's do a short experiment. I'll just give a couple of prompts. You don't have to shout the answer out, <coughs> um, but here goes. So I'd like you to recall the first line of the song, Hey Jude. I'll give you about five seconds. Now, I'd like you to recall the definition of the word truth. I'm going to hazard a guess and think that for most of you, one was a lot simpler than the other. And researchers at, the University of, uh, at Duke University attribute this to the Velcro theory of memory. They found that like, our brains, very much like Velcro, has thousands and thousands of discrete pieces of information, very disorganized, like the furry loops on the Velcro, until they come in contact with a solid hook. A hook, like that information I told you about, the popcorn, how unhealthy it is. So the moment you have that, you'll be able to make a lasting impression. And I hope I made that simple enough for you. Speaking of simplicity, simplicity is the key to making your message stick. I'd like to introduce a fruit. It's called the pomelo. I could tell you all types of information about this particular fruit. It's grown in Asia. It's the best in subtropical climates. It has lots and lots of antioxidants. But 
we often know so much about a particular subject that we're presenting on that we end up sounding kind of like a Wikipedia page. I've inundated you with all of this information about a particular fruit, but there's nothing actually concrete about it. Another option is that I could say a pomelo is kind of like a big grapefruit. So whenever you're presenting information, think of these two different options. You could give a lot of details and a lot of information, or you could have one simple analogy that's really evocative. So just think about these two choices if you're maybe doing a work presentation where you happen to know a lot about a particular topic. I'd also like to introduce a secret of Hollywood executives. It's called the high concept pitch. So when it comes time to introduce a new movie or a new particular show that you might want to pitch, Take this example, speed. Again, doesn't, doesn't say very much, or you try to explain it, it's going to have counter reason it, it's going to be amazing. Or I could say, it's like Die Hard, but on a bus. <laughs> and the reason this works is because it's, you're drawing on something that people know already, and it's going to evoke a lot of specific imagery. And we hear this a lot in Silicon Valley. For example, there could be the Uber of X, the Uber, Uber of dog sitting. And this is often overused, but to the extent that you can find some other example that people can draw upon already, it's going to make it much easier for that message to be simple and for that message to stick. <coughs> and last, I'd like to talk about the power of proverbs. For example, one of my favorite proverbs or a famous saying is, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. It's also a JFK, JFK <coughs> quote, like Killian's earlier. And the reason that these proverbs work is because they're simple, it's just one line, and they're very profound. So if you have a presentation, think if you can just distill it to one line, to one saying that's going to stick with people, what might that be? And for this particular section, I'll just use the US Navy saying, which is keep it simple, stupid. US Navy design principle, think of how do you make everything as approachable as possible? So now, we've given you the tools to make both a great first impression and also to make your message last. <laughs>